My people, welcome back to you and I talk show with Luis Wachu, your favorite talk show. And today, my people, we have as multi-talented as it gets. Stay tuned. Welcome to the show, my people. I am so happy to be here. Nicole Oliver. Hi. How and are you? I love your outfit. Thank you. I was just saying, I like your orange. I like this outfit. This is like va va voom, va voom, va voom. Uh huh. I feel a little underdressed. <laughs> I do my best to sparkle and shine. I love shine. the bling, you know. It's Thank blinging. You. And you're blinging from the top to the oh, bottom. Oh, man, you know, when it rains like it is, I got to bring some sparkle and sunshine in somehow. So. This is what we're doing today. Yes. Yeah. So you're so talented. Oh, thank you. You're an actress. You're a voice actor. You're a director. You're a producer. You're a motivational speaker. Yes. So this is the thing that I want to start off. Yeah. I always thought that voice actors, which I've also tried to do, by the way, but I've always thought that voice actors are not that good looking. <laughs> you're good looking. <laughs> What's up with that? Well, you know, I went and saw a doctor before I came and saw you because I knew you were going to say that. Um, well, I do make my living in front of the camera when they let me. Mm -hmm. I've been uh, I've been a performer. That's been my only job for over 24 years. Okay. <laughs> I have been an actor and actress, actually, because gosh darn it, yeah. it's hard to be a woman. It's hard to be a woman in this business. You got to work at it, you know. Nice. Um, but yeah, I've been doing lots of it, and so... Well, thank you for the compliment. For Is that why you've that. had to be so multi-talented? Because as a woman, you don't get that many chances, so you have to keep adding on many, many, many things that you could do. Yeah, I think so. But you know, I'm also, I'm also, I also get bored. Uh -huh. You know, I, I, they say I think we have about six careers in a lifetime. I remember reading that somewhere when I was uh, younger, and thinking, whoa, six careers. But you know, I've been kind of doing six careers simultaneously, I guess. <laughs> but um, I like it. I like options. I like diversity. I like not being trapped. And I like the unexpected. So uh -huh. it's been a great choice and a path for me so, so far. So beautiful. So tell us what you're working on right now. Well, right now. Like the top three the things top that three you're working on. Because I know you're working on a couple of things. I just finished working on a TV show that I'm not allowed to talk about because if I talk about it, apparently lawyers will come down from the ceiling and I'll be like taken away. Uh huh. But it may have superheroes in it. Anyway, yeah. so I started working that. Uh, when is that coming out? Uh, in the end of March 2016. You'll be able to see that. I uh, finished working on a feature film called Phil The Tale of Flossing and Plumbing. Yes, I know. It's an exciting title. It's a long title. Directed by Greg Kinnear, who's an incredible... Is he directing now? Yeah, he is. And he's also acting, starring in it. So it was really cool to work with an actor who was also the director. Because uh -huh. so we'd be doing scenes together, and he'd say something. I'm like, wait, why are you... Oh, right, you're my director. <laughs> That's right. That's why you're telling me that. Um, and then cartoon-wise, I'm really blessed. I have four shows on the go. I have the new Lego part of the Lego franchise. I actually am, a, I have Lego characters. Yeah. I went into the Lego store and, 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 and I bought my characters. Wow. I am the coolest person to my kids right now. So I'm gonna kind of hold on to that moment. Wow. And, then, and yeah. the, the other thing that I saw, uh, Tom and Jerry, you know, Tom and Jerry was one of like my favorite. Oh, was it? Cartoons, you know? I did the voice you for about three years for, Jerry. yeah, for Mrs. Two Shoes. You ever, all you ever saw was her cankles. Okay. You know, she was, she didn't have calves and ankles. They were cankles, they uh -huh. kind of blended. Uh -huh. She told Thomas, get me that mouse. Thomas, you gotta get, Thomas, get me that mouse. And all you ever saw were her her big, big, big legs and her shoes, and and she was this lovely lady from the south. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was a fun show to be a wow, part of. Wow, yeah. so three years. Yeah, we did that for three years and then moved on, and yeah, so lots of things. And in this business, job permanence is is is. It doesn't happen. Forget about it. Yeah, forget about it. Yeah. So. And how is it uh, being in Vancouver? Uh, is this is the right place for what you're doing, or have you ever felt like maybe you needed to go to another city? I've, I've been in other cities. I was a gypsy. I did Toronto, Los Angeles, Vancouver, lived in Toronto, lived in L.A. Uh, I met my husband here. Uh -huh. And I really realized quite quickly that I wanted more than just work. 
You know, my dad died when I was 25. Oh. And that was, which was just, you know, not that yeah, long ago. Yesterday, yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Well, it feels yeah. like it. But seriously, <laughs> him, his passing for me at such a young age really made me contemplate what was important and what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And uh, my resume wasn't going to fit in a tombstone, so... You yeah, know. it kind of makes you think, yeah. okay, when I die, what do I want to leave behind and what do I want people to say that I have done? Yeah. So was your dad like an inspiring uh, figure? He was. He was, um, he was head of a multinational computer company. He was started with IBM in the 60s, back when computers were on many floors of buildings. You know, you see that they're like huge and the reel-to-reel. -reel and uh, he put computer banking into the UK and... Mm. Um, a funny guy, he was a terrible golfer, and he could actually take his underwear off without taking off his pants first. An incredible feat, and I think maybe the reason why my parents I know how were married to take for so long. My bra off without take without you know. I don't know how you take off the. I'm, I know. Very I'm talented have to guy. Start thinking about Your it. Your brain will explode. I've tried to figure it out. <laughs> but um, anyway, he helped me at a young age figure out what was important and I met my husband and I've settled here and I have two boys raising a family here mm -hmm. so yeah in Vancouver out of love all right so let's take a short break and come back and keep talking about that fantastic you and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs and all other talented and inspiring people please contact info at watcher.com to be a guest on the show. Welcome back, my people. We are still talking to the multi-talented Nicole Oliver. Which one of all the things that you do, actor, voice actor, yeah. director, producer, motivational speaker, which one? Do you have a favorite? Or oh, this is like when you have many children, you can't really have a favorite. It's Sophie's choice, right? The movie, my daughter or my son? Who do I choose? <laughs> um, I love them all. And I, I love that I don't have to be limited. Mm. I love choice. Mm -hmm. uh, and it inspires me. And I get my inspiration from different things every day. And, you know, I'm always eyes open, ears open for what could be coming next, too. Um, something I got from my dad as well. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then what is this? Uh, you also founded Predator Communications. Sure. So my husband is an award-winning composer, and um, we met. He actually wrote the music for a movie I was in, and we met at the Toronto Film Festival. Uh, gosh, 18 years ago. Uh -huh. And my So music people do get to meet? They Well, he met my mother. My mother was my date, and I left my mother because I had to go do a press walk, uh -huh. and I come back in the theater, and my mom's sitting next to this very nice gentleman, and she introduces us, and then she leans over to me, and she goes, Nikki, you need to date a man like that, <laughs> not the other. <laughs> Beep, you've been dating, right, you know. And I actually listened to my mother for the first oh, time did. ever. Oh, you did. And I asked him out, and uh -huh. uh, we've been married for 15 years. You asked him out. I did. The audacity. I did. Teach me. Teach me how you, you know do what? that. I, well, Vancouver, bless... Bless Vancouver. Uh -huh. It's crappy for single people. Uh -huh. I don't know what happens. People move. They lose their brain or their 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 courage or something. It, I was in Toronto. It's fine. People would talk to you. It doesn't mean you're going to get married. You can have some great conversations. You come out here and everyone's in this little bubble. Maybe it's the rain. I don't know. I don't what know. It people is. are reserved. They're very reserved. Yeah. And it's very difficult to make. I found uh -huh. to make connections out here. Uh huh. You would expect this to be a hype city because it's by the ocean and everything, and you would expect it, right? You would think, yeah, but yeah. it's also very chill and a lot of um, old values, I think, still, mm. you know? We're not, we're a city, I think, that's just starting to come into its infancy, really, uh -huh. starting to grow and explode, and so it'll be cool to see where Vancouver goes, but when I first, it was, it was a tough town, yeah. tough town to connect. So you asked him out? I did. Like, in which language? <laughs> the language of love. <laughs> Can we go out? I dropped my clothes. I'm like, ah, let's go. No, I just said, hey, it'd be uh, great to see you. Um, I, do you want to go for a coffee or a glass of wine? Mm -hmm. or, and he said, sure. And we got together and uh, it was great. But he asked you for marriage, though. 
Well, did you he have did. to ask him? No, that? he asked me. Okay, okay, okay. And when he asked, he was, he was driving him nuts. He was trying to figure out a way to do a really romantic proposal, but I was so busy. I was on a play at the same, and working, and he'd go, let's go for a walk on the beach. And I'm like, no, we never go for walks on the beach. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Let's do this. I'm like, what are you, crazy? No, it's raining outside. Yeah. So finally, a Sunday morning, he just rolled out of bed and put the ring on my pillow. And I was mute for six hours. I didn't say a word for six you, hours. You, mute for six hours. I know. Hours. And my husband's like, if I had known that giving you jewelry, giving me, jewel, giving me jewelry shuts me up. Are you watching, Chris? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Wow, that is so fascinating. Oh, my goodness. So what are you working on together? This is how you founded the company? Yeah, so Pred back to Predator Communications. I went back a few years and I, ago and I got my Master's of Communications from Royal Roads in Victoria because I had nothing else to do. I wanted to feel smart again was what it was. I wanted to know that hard work meant an A mm. because as a performer and actor, you don't get that validation. You get rejected all the time. I mean, frankly, as a performer, just getting out of bed and showing up, that's an A, a gold star. Uh -huh. But it doesn't mean you can pay your rent or anything, right? Yeah. So we started this company, Predator Communications, and we've done uh, corporate video and for, for other companies, worked for the city of Vancouver, city of Ottawa, um, creating uh, multi-platform you know, web videos or whatever they need. And it's really cool to work with my husband. We actually work together really well. Wow. Really well. It's, wow. it's, it's, I was a little... It was in the same office. Yeah, we work great together. So you we live together. in the same house. We live in the same house. And then you also go to work. Sometimes, yeah, we'll go work on projects together and it's really fantastic. We have a great, great synergy uh -huh. and a great collaboration. And then we go home and then I yell at him for leaving his socks on the floor. So it's perfect, really. And then you also have kids. Yeah, Where boys. did you find the time to do all the creative things that you do and then also have two boys? Well, I never thought I'd be a mom, uh -huh. and that, but I, I never thought I'd get married either. So kind of one came after the other, and um, I thought, okay, well, let's go. Start a little later in life. You know, really, I think kids take a lot of energy. They take a lot of energy. My kids are almost teenagers now, so that's a different type of energy, a mental energy, an emotional energy. You know, stay away from girls energy. <laughs> um, I don't, you know, I just wanted to do it, and I did, and had two kids. They're 19 months apart, and uh, they're amazing, and they make my whole day better. They really wow. Do. Yeah. And so how do they feel about what you do? Do they get to see you often, or are you often gone? Or do you take with them if you're traveling? All, all of the above. And my kids are actually in the business too, believe it or not. Oh. So, um, wow. yeah, so, you know, our lifestyle, our crazy circus lifestyle, as other friends of ours who aren't in the business call it, that's all they've known. Um, we're a tight unit. We support each other. We love each other. We love big. We love loud. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we, we have a good time. Nice. Yeah. So what is the future? Where, where would you like to go? I mean, what do you, where do you see yourself going? And yeah. uh, ideally, where do you think you would? For me? Yeah. Uh, I want to head a studio. Nice. Like, that'd be good. Um, I, I'd like to find, well, I want to direct uh, more. I, I have a couple of short film ideas that I'm really looking forward to, to doing. Mm -hmm. I'm actually thinking of doing it with my kids, doing it as a, uh, my husband would, produce it and so do a family kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, Are you writing? Yeah, I'm writing. Wow. Which so you're going to be writing it and, and then most probably producing starring it, directing it. Directing it and get the kids in it, get my husband to produce it and do the post-production on it. Yeah, and call in some favors from other, some other really talented people. So that's out there. Uh -huh. um, I've been doing motivational speaking and I love mentoring and talking to people and sharing my story. Mm -hmm. I want to do more of that. Mm -hmm. And um, I love the business of this business. Nice. And, um, uh, you know, I want to see more women in positions of decision making. Mm -hmm. And so it might as well start with me. And the motivational speaking thing, mm -hmm. I mean, I can see that you are a naturally light type of person. Okay, good. I fooled you. <laughs> Great. Great. I fooled you. I'm as dark as chocolate velvet cake, my friend. Uh, <laughs> Motivational speaking, well, you know, I, uh, I've always believed in mentoring. I got where I am because I had some people who would volunteer to step up and to mentor me and to share their experience and to listen to me when I was in positions of difficulty and offer me advice, and they wanted nothing for it. Yeah. 
And so I think it's important to give back. I do believe in that philosophy. And I, I, I really would like to be a person that can maybe inspire others to achieve their dreams. Wow. Okay, let's take a short break and then keep talking about that. You got it. You and I talk show with Louise Wachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uwachu.com to be a guest on the show. My people, welcome back to the show. So, okay, we're getting motivated now. Yes. So it's because you're a happy person, and then so people be like, okay, we need this person to come in here because the rest of the room is sad. But you know, it's not so much that. I mean, I'm happy now, but my life's been interesting. I mean, in a nutshell, I, I mean, I've gone through, uh, I've had postpartum depression after both my children. I've suffered from anxiety my whole life. I'm a massive overachiever. I know you're shocked, right? Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, and you're so funny too. Add that to that list that you're making. I'm funny. Right? She says I'm funny, so it's true. Um, I started out as a dancer, so I had body image issues. I had uh, eating disorders. Um, I, I, I'm in an industry where you're judged by how you look, and your self-esteem is completely shattered. Um, you know, so I don't mean to make light of my journey, but my journey's been full, and um, and I think. If you share your story, the courage to share one's story will encourage others to get into the conversation, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think the more we speak about things, the happy to the unpleasant, the more connected we become. We're so disconnected from uh -huh. each other. I mean, you just look out this window. There's a, you can't see, but there's a big window in front of us. And there's people, they're looking in these little screens. And the world is so myopic and so tiny and so focused. and on nothing, yes. stuff that doesn't concern them. Yeah. And so I want to encourage people to share their story, to find their voice, to lift their head, uh -huh. to connect with other people, Yeah. and say, I matter and so do you. Yeah. You know? It's very interesting. It's also very important because people see uh, somebody who has succeeded and they see the final product, mm -hmm. but they don't know the process of uh, yeah. getting there. So. They may think that it's been rosy and cheesy and, and easy for you, but... <laughs> it's been cheesy. <laughs> Slightly pink at times. <laughs> Nowhere near easy, but yeah. 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 But so when you get to speak to people and then you tell them about your journey, and then does that, uh, is that the point of motivation? Does that then motivate them to be like, okay? I, I hope so. I mean, I think if anyone has... You know, if they come out to listen to someone else, there's obviously something has been sparked, mm -hmm. right? There's a desire, an impetus for something different than where they are. Yeah. And if people are willing to open their ears to listen to someone else, we don't do that, right? We talk over each other, if we talk to each other at all. I mean, I have a home line at home and I'm, people text me, I'm like, call me, <laughs> call me. I hate that, you know. My husband texted me. I'm like, you're in the basement. Come upstairs and talk to me. I'm like, what? But, you know, they're making light of it. But yeah. I, I also believe through humor in that you mm -hmm. can really help mm -hmm. find a truth. Yeah. And so who is your audience? Or who would you like to reach out to? Well, my there? audience is, I mean, you know, I um, obviously women, mothers, um, but uh, young women, um, young men. Um, you know, I, I, I do voices on a show called My Little Pony, and uh, it's become quite the pop culture phenom, and their fans are called bronies. And I've had an opportunity, brony is anyone from two to a hundred, man or woman, girl or boy. Uh, even met a brony dog, so animals count too. But um, I've met some young teenage boys who are um, struggling with this idea that if I'm a boy, I must like blue and I must, I must play hockey. Um, you know, and this show helped, I think, everybody understand that girls don't have to like pink, boys don't have to like blue. Yeah. Together we're more powerful and stronger, and there's a place for everybody. Uh. And so, I mean, I love kids, um, but to talk, because I have two boys, to be able to talk to boys and to allow them to um, access their emotions, be emotional, powerful, strong young men, that, that would be cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. 
since you have two boys and you do all this work that may also be for children, especially in voiceover, yeah. do they have like a favorite of your work or do they do they even recognize you or it's it's strange to them? You know what? Yes, they recognize it and they think it's cool, but it's just kind of what we do. I mean, I remember when I had kids, it was like, okay, I get to read stories and I get to read in all my voices and they're going to love it. And I remember my youngest, Grady, at one point, I was reading stories, I was doing the little old woman voice, and then the little boy voice, the little girl voice. And he's like, Mom, can you just talk to me in your regular voice? And I was like, okay. Cat in the hat, you know? Uh -huh. um, but so they're, I mean, they've been raised in a house where there's music going on in the basement and we're going off to film sets or they're traveling, you know, so their life is, is what they consider normal. Uh -huh. Others may not, but mm -hmm. to them it's just whatevs. Yeah. Whatevs. Do like they that. have like a, a favorite, like this one that's so famous with the rest of the people, yeah. do they also like it? And then do they tell their friends, oh, that's my mom, or they're not? Yeah, no, they, they talk. They talk, that's my mom. I think now that I'm, I'm doing a Lego show called Nexo Nights, it's uh -huh. just started in the States. Uh -huh. I'm allowed to say that. Okay. Um, <laughs> Let's drop it. No Nexo. <laughs> okay. um, and because I now have Lego figures, uh -huh. I'm pretty cool. Like, with my, I'm, I'm getting some cred with the friends because mm. they go to the Lego store mm -hmm. and They're, they'll see. There's the character, mom, you know. Yeah, great. So that's kind of cool. So I'm going to try and ride that as long as I can. Uh huh because pretty soon it's that mom, mom be quiet, mom get out of my room, mom leave me alone, that's not too far away, so. Yeah, and I also wanted to ask you about um, how is it working with somebody as talented as uh, David Foster, the music? Mm. Um, well, my husband worked with him. Um, he wrote the music for Heart of a Dragon. Yeah, you Chris. worked on Heart of yeah, a Dragon. Yeah, and I did, some I, mean, I did a voice on that. Yeah. Um, you know, they're just people. Mm -hmm. they're, I mean, I've, I have been, haven't really sort of starstruck, sort of starstruck once. Um, I met George Clooney. I didn't work with him, but I met him. I was pretty quiet. Okay. I was pretty blown away. <laughs> Where was uh, that courage of asking people out when you met Went it? right out the window. <laughs> it was just gone. Um, yeah, so, but you know, they're just people. Uh -huh. That's really cool. What is disappointing though is when, if you've been watching somebody your whole career or your whole life as an, and you meet them and they're not kind, <sighs> that's kind of shattering. And that, that's happened. Okay, let's, uh, let's end on that. <laughs> let's land on that downer. <laughs> Show break. With Louise Wachu, we love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at Uwachu.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, thank you for being here. Nicole Oliver, it's so much fun. So I heard that it's your birthday. It's my birthday. You know. Yeah, it's my birthday. What's, what are you planning? Well, I, um, I know you might find it shocking, but I'm the sort of person that likes to celebrate my birthday for at least a week. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to go out uh, this evening with a very dear friend of mine, and uh, there's another party. My agent, uh, it's his birthday. It was yesterday, and we have celebrated our birthdays together. You want to drop his name? For 20 years. Yes, Murray Gibson. I okay. love him dearly. Okay. He's with Red Management, and I've been with him for 20 years. Ooh. I started when I was two. Wow. Really. Um, and, you look yeah. so young, though. I mean, this is why you shouldn't say your age, actually. I because you look so young. You look so fresh. Well, thank it's you. like if you, um, if you say your age, you, you may kill the illusion. Or people are gonna think, think that the they illusion can. was killed a long time ago, <laughs> Louise. But all right, I'm 30. There, it's out. It's out. I'm 30 years old. Whew, I feel but good. Fact, you should give people advice on how to stay young. Is there something in particular that you have actually done, or is this like some sort of natural thing? I've lifted my whole face up six <laughs> inches now. Uh, laughter, ah. obviously. Laugh so I'm gonna keep laughing. Love a lot. <laughs> And um, um, moisturize, 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 ah, water. Especially winter, right? Well, I think it's because I live in Vancouver now with all the rain. 
I look at it that the dewy moisture is going into my skin and mm. keeping me fresh. And Who dry. needs a spa when you? No, I, you do. You need a spa <laughs> okay, when okay, you okay. live here. But anyway, we'll go with that for now. Yeah. Uh huh. Laughter. There's my laughter. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying that what we're doing right here is we're so young right now. Like we're within seconds of going into diapers. I'm telling you, we've regressed. Have we regressed? No. We're still mentally smart and challenged. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So where can people find you right now? Well, I, well, well I'm here with you, but on, on, the, on, the, on the internets, you mean? Yes. On the internets where the kids go, uh, you can check me out on my website, mm -hmm. www.nicoleoliver.com. I'm on the Twitter with the little birdie, birdie, mm -hmm. and I'm at Mouth Noise, M-O-U-T-H, like the body part, N-O-I-Z, Z for American friends, E, Mouth Noise, because I make a lot of noise. Oh with my mouth on Twitter, uh -huh. mouth noise. Uh -huh. And uh, that's how you can find me electronically. And uh, if you see me walking down the street, say, hey. Nice. Is there anybody, we still have like one minute to yeah. go. Is there anybody out there that you love, that you would love to work with? Oh, yeah. You know. Maggie Smith. Boom. Oh, OK. Boom. Yeah. She, she, she's still alive, right? Yes, she is. OK. Um, she's, I did a, my first play. The British play. actress. I, yes. I, I like her work. Yes. My, yeah. I love her. My first play I did. I'm surprised that you say to her. Well, no, I She's did the prime of Miss great. Jean Brody, and she was the lead in the movie. And I saw the movie after I did the play, and I was like, ah, mom and dad, I'm not going to law school. I'm going to be an actress. So it's she all Dame Maggie Smith's fault. Oh, yeah. Wow. So good. So you would love to work with her. Yeah, and I would still love to be working when I'm her age as well. Oh. Right? See, now that is huge. That's awesome. All right. Okay. Unfortunately, it's so short, but thank you so much for being here. Maggie Smith, if you're listening, you know, call Nicole. Call me. Tweet me. <laughs> Tweet me, Maggie. Tweet me. <laughs> thank you, my people. Thank you, Louise. That was so great. Thanks, love. So good.